47 past the hour in Syria. The battle for Aleppo is nearing an end. The Syrian government is now in control of nearly all, by some accounts, 98 percent of eastern Aleppo, which was previously held by rebel forces. The latest fighting has left the streets, quote, full with dead bodies. According to the volunteer group, the White Helmets, UNICEF released a statement this morning citing reports from a doctor in the city saying many children, possibly more than 100, unaccompanied or separated from their families, are trapped in a building under heavy attack in East Aleppo. The UN Human Rights Office says it has received reports of pro-government forces killing at least 82 people, including 11 women and 13 children, as they attempted to flee their homes, adding it is, quote, a complete meltdown of humanity. Mm -hmm. And joining us now, Professor of political science at Stanford University, director of the Institute for International Studies, and the former ambassador to Russia, Michael McFall, and former DOD official and former executive director of the Graham Talent WMD Commission, now a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council, Dr. Evelyn Farkas. Ambassador McFall, let me start with you. Uh, these reports out of Aleppo this morning are horrific, but they've been horrific for five years now. We're just hearing it again this morning. Uh, Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister for Russia, said on Friday, that the airstrikes of Aleppo will continue until the, quote, bandits have been run out of town. Presumably those bandits are the women and kids and the doctors who are getting killed today. What more can be done now at this late hour? I don't think there's much that can be done in Aleppo. I think it's a horrible tragedy, uh, a, a giant failure of the international community, including my former administration, the Obama administration, and how to deal with it. But there's no good options now there. Um, uh, I think moving forward, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the, the rest of the country as we continue our operations against ISIS. Uh, well, but what happens when we achieve victory? Uh, what happens when we take Raqqa? Do we just hand it over to Mr. Assad now in the new Trump administration? That's where the next uh, phase of this fight will be. So, Ambassador, what were the specific failures of the Obama administration? You just described them generally. What could have been done over the last five and a half, six years to prevent the scenes we're seeing this morning in Aleppo? So, uh, you know, these are all counterfactuals, and I don't want to claim that had we done one or these things, it would have been different. But in the early phases, when uh, there was a chance for negotiations, uh, we didn't push hard enough for that. We relied on the Russians. We hoped that they would bring Assad to the table, and that never happened. I was part of those negotiations, and that never happened. Second, uh, there was a red line drawn about uh, weapons of mass destruction. And uh, the president, after they used those weapons of mass destruction, decided not to use force. Uh, I think that was a big mistake. Um, even some of that force, maybe it wouldn't have gotten rid of weapons of mass destruction or stopped Mr. Assad. But even taking out some airplanes and taking out some air bases might have reduced the, the carnage in Aleppo. And third, remember, Russia is one of the partners bombing Aleppo. Russia is one of the people attacking these civilians that you just reported on. And we have tried to negotiate with Russia. And I fear, moving forward, that we're even going to negotiate with them more. And we're going to accept their narrative in Syria. Uh, in the new Trump administration, and that that worries me deeply, Dr. Evelyn Farkas. How did it how did it get this far? We are looking at genocide. We're looking at, at, at crimes against humanity, and we have for several years now. And neither the Obama administration, nor the Western world, nor the United Nations stepped forward to stop this slaughter, the slaughter of women, the slaughter of children, the targeting of doctors, the targeting of hospitals, war crimes. And yet yeah, the international community sat back and did nothing. I mean, I think it was very short-sighted because the other aspect of this was that the refugee flow that the war in Syria caused mm. very directly and negatively impacted Europe and even U.S. politics, and, and we still haven't seen the end of the impact of that. So the refugee flows are still continuing. We're having hundreds of people dying, if not more, every day on the Mediterranean still trying to cross. 
um, of course, the Russian human rights atrocities are off the charts. I mean, this is unprecedented. What they did in Aleppo, in particular, targeting hospitals deliberately, it's almost worse than Grozny, which they also, where, where the Russians fought within their own federation against the Chechens why, why, and flattened the, the, it, the, the it's city. It's unspeakable. It's Rwanda. Yeah. Why did we do nothing when our president and our Congress and our allies could see these horrors unfolding every single we day. Should have, Joe, we should have done a safe zone, you know, a no-fly zone with a safe haven under it. We should have done that. We could have done that at a lot of different junctures. But the military, you know, they, they mean well, but they paint a picture for the civilians about all of the obstacles and the cost. And so it takes a lot for the civilians then to counter that and explain, regardless of the cost, regardless of the risk, we need to do this. And certainly before the Russians intervened in September of 2015, it would have been a lot easier to set up a no-fly zone and then a safe zone under it. Let's bring in senior member of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, Republican Congressman Dana Rohrbacher. He's the chairman of the subcommittee on Europe, Eurasia, and Emerging Threats. Uh, Dana, how, how, how did the United States sit back and do absolutely nothing? as Assad was slaughtering his people and the Russians stepped in and joined in on that slaughter. Why did we do nothing? Well, that's a, a question that's based on false premises no, and it's as far not. as I'm concerned. No, it's now, not. Here's the, no, well, wait a minute. You want me to answer your question? No, I, I just don't want now, you to lie on this my television channel, show. Is this channel every time they ask a question and somebody tries to answer the way they want to? Well, no, they interrupt you, you, that you, I, we just guest. don't let people come on the show and This is lie. what happened before. Let me, let me, let me put it this way What to happened you. before? You lied before? If we wouldn't cut uh, you off no, unless I've you been, lied. Are you saying the Russians didn't target uh, women and children in Aleppo? Are you going to let me answer? You're going to let me I just asked you the question, question again. Are you going to interrupt I that asked again? you a question, okay, and, and you said it was Listen, a false goodbye. premise. Goodbye. If you're not going to let me All say right. anything, Dana. it's goodbye. All right, Dana I'm a Robach, guest on you your so, program. Dana, thank you so much for being with us. I am a guest on your us. program, we'll and you're not letting easy. me have a say. Well, huh? I asked you a question twice. You don't, yeah, you don't, want, you don't want me to answer right. the question the way I am going to no. answer the okay. question you if I have a chance. Okay, you got 10 seconds. Go ahead. Answer the question. All right, so now you're going to give me a chance to do it. All right, the bottom line is... We are in war with radical Islam. We are at war with people who want to destroy us. You're talking about a no-fly zone where we are where, where we are shooting down Russian airplanes. No, no. We need to be I, I, we need no, to be working with the about. Russians I, to I defeat about radical the, I Islam. I asked about the women and children that the Russians were targeting. Are Let they, me tell you something. We allied targets? with Stalin. We allied with Stalin in order to defeat Hitler. Well, now Stalin was a like horrible man. Again, he murdered millions of people, right. but we knew Hitler was a bigger threat. Today, the biggest threat is radical Islam right. to our safety. So and if we keep trying, if we keep trying to, to focus on all of the faults yeah. of Russia so that we can't work with them to defeat this common enemy, right. you're not doing any service to the people of the United States or the cause of peace. Well, I, I, I think we found common cause here. You, you're comparing Vladimir Putin to, to Stalin. I think that's, I think that's a, a, a apt comparison. Um, I don't care who we compare him to. Yeah. We need Russia on our side to defeat radical Islam as we allied with Stalin to defeat Hitler. The, and for, for Talk about a no-fly zone. We're going to shoot down Russian airplanes. And by the way, only, there is a lot of question as to who those people are on the ground who are, who women are and children. Uh, now claiming to be moderate Muslims, and we have ended up financing radical so Islamists I, who want to hurt us. So, Michael McFaul, are, let me let me yeah. take it to you, Michael McFaul. We we have seen in press reports uh, women and children being targeted, hospitals being targeted by the Russians. Uh, Dana Rohrbacher actually uh, says that they're Muslim terrorists. What what can you tell us about what you know? So, I want to mention two things. First of all, we are in Syria fighting terrorists. It's called Operation Inherent Resolve. Google it, look it up, you'll see that we have been fighting for a year and a half, tens of thousands, uh, several thousand sorties, billions of dollars to kill ISIS. What you're witnessing in Aleppo, there are some terrorists there, yes, but the majority of the people there are innocent people, just like you said. And I don't believe that bombing Aleppo uh, into rubble is going to defeat the terrorists. Exactly the contrary. The images of Aleppo are inspiring terrorists all over the world. That strategy is not going to work in the long term.
Evelyn Farkas. Yeah, and if the Russians don't compromise, I totally agree with everything that Mike McFall said, Ambassador McFall said. If the Russians don't compromise with us, I mean, we've been trying to get a compromise all the way back to when Mike was working on the account, you know, many years ago. We've been trying to get a compromise with the Russians. The Russians should understand there will be no peace in Syria unless there's a negotiated transition, transitional government, unless the moderate opposition has a seat at the table, because there will be a low-level terrorist insurgency, or insurgency, I'll leave the word terrorist out, insurgency against Assad in addition to the terrorists that are already fighting Assad. Mm -hmm. Assad and we tried not very hard. A, Assad is not our enemy. Neither is, is Russia our enemy. The radical Islamists who've been murdering Americans by the thousands since 9 11. Congressman, but should we be an accomplice? But what if we're an accomplice to evil? Should we be an accomplice to evil? Assad, is the, we we be accomplice Assad to evil? is the only government that has given refuge to the Christian population of that country, of that area. He so is are a you bad endorsing man. a full scale a embrace of authoritarian dictators who are murdering women and children? Enemy. He is I have not no problem. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, one at a time, everybody. Uh, Listen, if I could just draw on the God's example. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stalin, Stalin, hold on, hold on. Stalin cut, was not, cut, Stalin uh, If you could cut Dana's microphone so we can actually have That's a question asked. Now, uh, if Dana stopped talking, we'll actually have the question asked. Has he stopped talking? Yeah. All right, go ahead, Elise, what? ask Dana a question. So what is the, what do you believe are the roles of American values in our foreign policy? And what is the line to be drawn when it comes to our potential alliances and the full-scale atrocities that they may be committing. With Assad and Putin most, as it pertains to exactly. The most important line we need to draw is what will make sure that the American people are more secure against those enemies that want to destroy us. We are now are in a battle. But does it make us more Western secure if we are partnered we are, with these unsavory allies? Can I, can, I, can I talk more than 10 seconds with a, to finish a point? Well, you right waste now, about 20 seconds okay, right, asking that question over and over again. So go ahead okay. and talk. Right now, we have, we're facing uh, an enemy that wants to destroy Jesus. Western civilization through a terrorist offensive against us in particular. And for us to, to, to vilify and to, and, and to, I would say, yes, it may be some, a lot of these charges are maybe accurate of what we're hearing right now. Assad isn't the enemy. The enemy is the people who want to destroy us. Our basis should be in negotiation and our policies, what's going to be securing the United States of America. Not make Can it I just worse. add something here yeah, uh, from please. here in Palo Alto? Yes. I, I agree with Congressman Rohrabacher, yeah. but the problem yeah. on the data is that Assad is not fighting ISIS. Russia is not fighting ISIS. We, the United States of America and our allies, are fighting ISIS. And when I was in the government, we tried for many years to say we need to fight the common enemy. And instead of fighting ISIS, they decided they were better to fight those, what exactly. we, the, the people we were supporting. So I agree if we could get them to support our common fight, but they're not a member of Operation Inherent Resolve. They have yeah. other interests. And in the long run, well, the uh, those have, images from Aleppo will be around for years, inspiring the very terrorists the Congressman Rohrabacher wants to fight. All right, it's 9 o'clock. That's all the time we have. Uh, Dana Rohrabacher, uh, thank you. A uh, little different than the Dana I served with. Uh, former Ambassador Michael McFall, thank you. And Dr. Evelyn Farkas, thank you as well. That's that does it for us this it morning. For morning Joe. Stephanie Rule picks up the coverage right now. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.